what is going on guys welcome back to another video in this video we're going to be looking at how to deal with the very common problem of an imbalanced data set so let's roll that beautiful intro first and then let's get into the video All right, so as an example, I have images of two different dog breeds, uh, Golden Retriever. So I'll just show you one image of that. And for that, for, the, for that class, we have 50 images. So for, we have 50 Golden Retrievers. And for uh, Swedish Elk Hound, we only have one image, which is, you know, a very clear uh, imbalance. So what we want to be able to do is still give equal uh, sort of weight um, for the um, the network. And so from my understanding, there are two methods of dealing with uh, imbalanced data sets. So I'll just write that methods for dealing with imbalanced data sets. And the first one is oversampling. And it, it is kind of exactly what it sounds like in that uh, we will uh, oversample that, in this case, this single image and you know we'll perform different data augmentation and so on, but we'll see that example uh, very like more frequently than than other examples. Uh, and then the other method that I see is a class weighting, and what that means is that when we're computing the loss for each of those classes, when there is a, when there is the case of um, of the Swedish Elkham, for example, we might give that a higher priority for the network. And what that means is that we might multiply that loss by, by some number. Um, I'll just say that from what I've seen, uh, oversampling seems to be the preferred method, but uh, I haven't seen any any studies and or any papers rather on on comparing the two. But this one is the is the one I'll kind of focus on and the one that I see most in practice. Um, and I'll actually show you the, the second one first, just because it's so much shorter and, and, and easier. Um, so for the class weighting, all you do is uh, when you cre create your loss function, so in this case, cross, um, oh yeah, we need to import as well. So uh, let's see, I'll do all the imports. So import torch vision data sets as data sets, import OS from torch utils uh, data, import weighted random sampler and data loader. Uh, we're also going to need import vision dot transforms as transforms import torch dot nn as nn. So uh, now we can hopefully use this. So cross entropy loss. And all that you do here is that you send in a weight. Um, so let's do torch tensor of in this case, we have two classes, right? And let's just say that the first one, the Golden Retriever, is the zeroth class, and then Swedish Elk Hound is the first class. So uh, what we do here is that we send in the weight for the Golden Retriever first. So let's put that at, you know, one. And so if we want to balance those two, since we have 50 more examples for Golden Retriever than we do for the Elk Hound, let's put a weight of 50 uh, to the Elk Hound. And, you know, this is, as I explained earlier in that, this will multiply that loss by 50 whenever the, whenever we see that image of the of the Swedish L count. And, uh, yeah, so that's all you need to do for, for class weighting. Um, you know, of course, if you have more classes, you would need to send in, you know, additional examples here and so on. But, you know, this is how you do it if you want to do class weighting. So let's now move on to the sort of the preferred method that I more commonly see. So for that, um, let's do a function, get loader. We'll do, we'll send in a root directory and we'll also send in a batch size. And this will all make sense soon. I'm just writing some skeleton code right now. So we're gonna have a main function and then we're also gonna do if name equals main, um, we'll run the main function. All right, so then um, in my get loader, uh, we'll just do, first of all, my, what happened there? Um, let's bring that back. So what I wanna do 
is my transforms equals, uh, first of all, let's just do some transforms. So transforms compose, um, and we'll do transforms dot resize to 24. And then we'll convert those to tensor. Okay, so how we'll do it in, in um, now with loading the data is that we'll use image folder. So we'll we'll just do dataset is datasets dot image folder, and the root is just a root directory that we send in. In this case, it's in in that dataset folder, but uh, you know we'll do that soon. And then the transform is going to be equal to my transforms. So that's the one we just created. Um, okay, so now that we have in da a data set. Uh, we're going to use this weighted random sampler. And so what we want to do, first of all, is that we want to sort of create some class uh, weights. So what we can do for the class weights is that we can send in one and then 50, right? Those are similar to the weights we did before. Um, although they, they don't have to be the exact number. So for example, we could do one divided by 50 and we could set one here. That would equal the same thing. It's just sort of uh, the relative weight difference that, that matters. But maybe for simplicity, let's just set one and, and 50. All right, so right now we're just specifying those class weights. Uh, I'll show you a way um, to do that more in code if you would have, I don't know, over 100 classes and you wouldn't want to go through each of them and show uh, look exactly how many examples you have and so on. Um, but all right. So then we are going to create sample weights. And this is going to be just zeros to start with. And then we're going to times that by the length of our data set. So uh, how this weighted random sampler works is that we need to specify exactly the weight for each uh, example in our entire data set. So how we do that is that we first create sample weights to just be zero, uh, which is and the length. So each each um, example in our data set starts with having a, a sample weight of zero. Then we're gonna uh, go through our data set. So we'll do for index and then data comma label in in uh, enumerate of our data set. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out what the class weight is for that particular class. So that's why we created this class weights. So we'll do class weights of of some label, right? Depending on what that label is. So we'll take out the class weight for that. Um, and we'll just call that class weight. Uh, then we'll do sample weights of this particular index, right? For this particular sample of our data set. We'll set that equal to class weight. And that's pretty much it. So now we've created that, those sample weights. And then we'll create our sampler. And this is going to be our weighted random sampler, where we'll send in the sample weights, we'll send in the num samples, which is going to equal uh, the length of our data set, uh, or yeah, so length of sample weights. And then we can also specify replacement equals uh, true or false. All right, so when editing the video, I noticed that I didn't really explain why we set replacement equals true. And that is because uh, if we set it to false, then we'll only see that example once uh, when we iterate through our entire data set. So obviously that's not what we want when we're doing oversampling. So when we're dealing with an uh, imbalanced data set and we're using oversampling, uh, then we always want to use replacement equals true. Uh, but now that we've created our sampler, we want to create our loader. So our loader is just going to be a data loader um, of that data set, right? We're all used to this. This is just what's you know normal for creating our um, for um, when we create our data set and data loader and so on. So we'll just do the batch size and we'll set that to batch size, which we uh, send into this function right here. And then what's different is that we specify a sampler. And in this case, our sampler is just going to equal sampler, which is this weighted random sampler. All right, so that might have been, you know, a little bit quick, I'm not sure. But let's go through it. So we make sure what's actually going on here. So first of all, we're creating our transforms. In this case, we're just using resize and to tensor, you know, in, in reality, you would 
in practice, you would normally add some data augmentation and so on. And then we're loading our data set using data set image folder. Um, and, and here we're sending in some root directory, which in our case is going to be that data set. And that's going to automatically handle the loading for us. Then we're specifying class weights, in this case, 1 and 50, because we have much more. Um, so we want to prioritize this class much more than the first one, because we have uh, fewer examples for this class. And then we're creating our sample weights. That's going to be the weight for each individual individual example in our data set. To create those sample weights, we're first starting out with initializing them as zero. Then we're going through all of our examples in our data set and then specifying exactly uh, that weight dependent on which class that example belongs to. And then we're creating our, our sampler where we send in this those sample weights. Um, and then we specify you know, how many examples we have, and then replacement equals true. Um, and then we're creating our data, uh, our data loader as normal. And the only difference is that we send in this sampler right there. So I'm going through this very step by step, because in the beginning, I didn't feel that this was a very intuitive for me. But uh, when you get used to it, it, it sort of makes sense. So uh, what I want to do is generalize this bit right here because I don't want to individually or, you know, write all of the class weights um, all the time, because that might take some time when you have over 100 different classes. So what we'll do is we'll just create an empty list. And we'll do uh, for root, and then subdirectory files in os walk of root directory. All right. And if you're not familiar with os walk, we're simply walking through each of those subfolders in that root directory. So we'll, we're going to check if the length of the files are greater than zero, then we'll just um, add class weights dot append. And then we'll add the length of those files. Sorry, uh, we're not actually going to add the length of those files because that then we would prioritize those who have more examples. So we'll do one divided by the length of those files. And I also just added this if the length of those files. So if there are no files in that subfolder, uh, then we would be simply, you know, dividing by, by zero here. And I guess there are other ways, but this is just a simple way of, of dealing with that problem. Okay, so now we've created our git loader. Let's um, create our main file here and make sure that this works. And did I do a mistake here? Oh yeah, sorry, this should be two equal signs. So now let's do loader is, and we'll run our git loader. We'll send, send in that root directory to be data set. And then we'll create a batch size of eight. And just to make sure that it works, or actually, first of all, we can just go through them. So for x and y, or data comma labels in loader, print labels. And then let's run that. And that should just be transforms, uh, transform rather than transforms. So hopefully that works now. All right. And as you can see here, uh, if we, you know, if we would have just uh, not done those class weights, then we would not see this very balanced uh, data set right here. So here we're seeing it might be difficult to count all of those, but this should be um, balanced. And to make sure that it actually is, we can do something like for epoch in range of, I don't know, 10. We can go through uh, the, that data set and we can count how many you know, number of retrievers, and then the number of L counts. So we'll just do number of retrievers plus equals torch.sum of labels equals, um, let's see, that was zero. And then we'll copy that. And we'll do num L counts plus equals labels equals one. And then in the end, let's just do print num retrievers and then print num L counts. So let's see what that looks like. All right. So here we can see, I think there's just some randomness to how I sort of um, 
how exactly that number comes up. And I think if we rerun it, we're probably going to see a different result. But as we can see, they're at least relatively balanced, much more balanced than they were in the beginning. Um, so that was it for dealing with imbalanced data sets. Hopefully this is useful to you. Uh, if it is, then please do subscribe to the channel because that helps a lot. Damn, I feel like a seller when I'm saying that. But anyways, thank you for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one.